I would like to share some exciting information about how you can save the lives of more cats in your shelter. If you were like me, you were taught that the responsible thing to do was to test every cat prior to adoption for feline leukemia or feline immunodeficiency virus. We thought we were ensuring that our adopters were getting a healthy cat and that by identifying positive cats prior to adoption, we were preventing the spread of these diseases. Thanks to the advancements in the field of shelter medicine, we have learned that this is not necessarily true. So I am here to share what I've learned and why I'm a convert. Testing every cat can actually result in the inadvertent euthanasia of healthy cats. The prevalence of feline leukemia and FIV when testing all cats is typically around 3%. Given the limitations of our in-house tests for diseases with such a low prevalence, the risk of a false positive when testing all cats gets high, much higher than one would think. I admit that I was shocked when I realized the implications. So with a test that could potentially give us a lot of false positives, we need to have a way to determine that a positive result is truly a positive. How do we do that? With confirmatory testing. Unfortunately, this testing can be quite expensive, 70 to $125, and some shelters can't afford that testing. So if they can't afford it, they either place the animal up for adoption with a potentially false label of feline leukemia positive or FIV positive, or worst case scenario is that they euthanize it. For those cats that aren't euthanized, the label of feline leukemia or FIV positive typically means a longer length of stay. This can lead to shelter crowding, upper respiratory infection, stress, not going home as quickly as they otherwise would have. Not only is this bad for the cat falsely labeled positive, but also for the other cats trying to make it out the door alive. There are fewer resources to go around when you have cats staying longer than they need to. Additionally, testing all incoming cats brings with it a significant chance that you're testing them too close to the time of the exposure. That could lead to false negative results. If we wait, or an adopter waits, to test a cat until 30 to 60 days after the last possible exposure, then you can be more certain that your negative test is truly negative. Please note, just because we're not testing every cat doesn't mean we shouldn't test any cats. Retroviral testing is an important diagnostic tool for veterinarians. Cats who are ill or unthrifty are more likely to be infected with feline leukemia or FIV, and in those cats, the test results are more accurate. In 2014, we spent $50,000 testing 3,300 cats. Think about what else your organization could do with that money. Improve your cat housing by adding portals, for example, which aside from making your cats happier, will probably decrease your URI, which will decrease your length of stay and save even more money. What about more staff or a raise for your current staff? Paying people a fair wage will help with staff satisfaction and retention. What about the time it takes to collect blood, run the tests, enter results, explain those results to adopters, wait for results on confirmatory testing if you get a positive, that is if your shelter even performs confirmatory testing. Think about all the things you could do for your cats if you had more time. Enrichment, TLC, space, time to recognize stress, illness, behavior issues. How about a caretaker who isn't burning out? We saw a noticeable difference here at our shelter and the staff responsible for testing when they did not have to test every cat. The prevalence of these diseases is overall very low in healthy appearing cats. Additionally, feline leukemia is a pretty hard disease to get unless you're a kitten born to an infected mother. Transmission of feline leukemia requires prolonged intimate contact between cats. There is a very small chance we could miss a positive cat, which could lead to potential exposure if there are other cats in the adopter's home. But given the low prevalence of these diseases, the risk of that happening is also low. The consequence, of course, could be significant for the individual cat and adopter if there are other cats in the home. But this should not outweigh the huge number of lives that could be saved by not automatically testing every cat. There has been no noticeable change in the health of our cat population. 
We still test before placing animals in community rooms. We understand that a negative test shortly after arrival at the shelter doesn't mean that they're truly negative. But we know that the test is better at identifying truly negative cats than they are at identifying truly positive cats. According to our adoption supervisor, most customers don't seem to be aware of feline leukemia or FIV. And those that are, or who express concern about us not automatically testing every cat, seem to understand once we explain our reasoning. We still offer the test for a reasonable fee at the time of adoption. It has been almost two years since we stopped automatically testing every cat. And while we do receive a fair amount of feedback from adopters, we haven't heard that a single cat has tested positive after adoption. We have heard from a couple of veterinarians who were not happy about this change. Their biggest concern was that we would potentially be adopting out feline leukemia or FIV infected cats to unknowing owners. Unfortunately, because of the limitations of this test, that could happen even if we were testing every cat. We always stress the value of lifelong veterinary care to adopters. We encourage them to take their pet to a veterinarian within seven to 10 days of adoption. By stretching shelter resources further, we are striving to get more animals into homes, which means more opportunities for community practitioners to establish a relationship with a new client and or a patient. So maximizing life-saving is a win-win for shelters and community vets. Once we stopped testing every cat, we did not notice a drastic change, positive or negative in our length of stay or adoption rate. There was likely some small decrease in length of stay due to the time it used to take us to test each cat. On busy days, we may not get to everyone on the list, meaning some cats would have to wait another half day or a day before adoption. However, in a different shelter where there are fewer trained staff, retrovirus testing all cats can be a significantly rate limiting step. Some shelters may only have someone capable of drawing blood a few times a week this could make a significant difference in length of stay. We still test cats that we suspect might have feline leukemia or FIV due to illness or dental disease, so we still see some positive cats, but we place them up for adoption if they're otherwise behaviorally and medically healthy. And although their length of stay is longer, it is no different than when we made positive cats available prior to this change. Shelters that adopt this approach can save more lives by not erroneously euthanizing healthy cats that test falsely positive for feline leukemia or FIV, decreasing the length of stay for their cats, which will in turn decrease URI, save money spent on housing and treatment of sick cats, result in less stressed cats, thus making them more adoptable improving staff job satisfaction. Happier, less overworked and stressed staff means more productive, creative, and engaged employees. Saving money on tests, care days, staff time spent testing and caring for cats with longer lengths of stay, on all the benefits that go along with the shorter length of stay. Not automatically testing every shelter cat is a new idea. And yes, change can be scary but that doesn't mean it won't bring great benefits. I hope you are as grateful for the field of shelter medicine as I am and can see why it is so important to continue to evolve and improve our processes as new information emerges. Thank you so much for listening.